So this is going to be a how-to video on how I install the smoke generator. I've already done one. This is actually the second one. I've already taken the model apart. I've already taken the the covering off. I've got the chassis here. I've already got all the little bits and pieces here. This was already a uh, DCC ready train. It already had the decoder here. Couldn't not tell you which decoder it is, but majority of them are the same. But it's actually the one that came with the Hornby model. So I can imagine it's some someone that they supply in most models. As you can see, I have unscrewed already the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit our wires into this. Now, this is the smoke generator I'm using. It's actually quite simple to do this. It's probably very simple. So, we have our two wires. So, I was told it doesn't matter which one goes to which, but I've got a feeling that the yellow is actually negative and the brown is positive. Not 100% certain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but could be. So, I've got my actual decoder booklet here, which I normally follow. Most decoders are the same. So, I need to find which socket it's going to go into. I'm going to disconnect this out. I'm going to wire it to the first function, function 1. Um, well, I don't know if it's actually called function 1, but AUX1, it's called. And so, keeping in mind that this is actually the first one I'm already doing, which is DCC ready. The second the other locomotive I did was not a DCC ready locomotive, so wiring was a little bit different, but more or less the same practice. So, I take that out, remembering that it goes that way. So, we are going to wire it in to, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the green and the blue. So the green, green is going to go to the negative and the blue is going to go to the positive. So, as it goes that way, it's going to be this one here. Will be the positive. And the negative will be the other one. I'll have a look shortly. I'm actually just going to stick this directly into the board. I'm not going to put any extra wires or anything like that. I don't want to mess around too much. Hopefully this is hot enough now. It's nearly hot enough. Just going to put a bit of flux on it to help it actually... I know it's probably going to be hard to actually see what I'm doing here, but I'll show a close-up shortly. So. As you can see. I put it in the second top one, which is the actual blue one. The negative's the green, which is the third one across along the bottom, which is going to be this one here. Again, a little bit of flux, just 
to help it. And actually, this is like I said, this is actually my first one that I'm doing, which was already DCC ready. So hopefully this works. I can only hope. So now I will screw this back on. Like I said, I did one already the other day, and it was not a DCC ready one, and it's perfect. The most easiest installation done. So I'm gonna, of course I'm going to test this now. Bear with me while I, hopefully this works. Just wanting to start it to make sure the actual smoke generator works. I'll put a tab of, just a tab of oil into it. It does not need much. There's only a very small amount you put into it. So. I will go to the locomotive. To let the, the key. Try not to short circuit out. Now we just test. Got to warm up. I can see it's starting to actually bubble in here. Good. So there we go. We have smoke. Like you see, very simple, very effective. Okay, welcome back to my how-to video. I have had a little break. I've come back. I had a bit of a problem with this actually as I was getting it. The one guy he said to me on the Facebook, he couldn't get the smoke generator to turn off. And I actually had the same problem. It wasn't turning off. And no matter how much I played around with it, it was just not going to turn off. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the problem was, right? Um, it could be a couple of factors, right? I think one factor was, um, one factor was the actual little, I, I found that the decoder, it was a, don't know which brand it is, but it was fitted in the Hornby locomotive when I got it, might be a Hornby one. I got a feeling it has gone as the train stopped working, stopped moving. It, I, I had a bit of a problem with it. So I actually end up getting one of my my actual decoders that I buy from the hobby shop. Um, can't remember what the brand is. I'm looking for the packet. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's the EU uh, ESU ones. So yeah, and I actually did a little remodeling of the locomotive myself. As the second problem I had was the little board that was supplied with it. I'm not a hundred percent certain, but I got a feeling the problem was somewhere here that some of the soldering had gone over. Now it was actually supplied like that, so I I said they'd done a really bad job with it, and I noticed that one of uh, one had a little wire cutting across, which I had to cut across off. But I still had problems, and then I had, like I said, problems with the, the decoder. It went, so I flicked it out, put my own decoder in it. Now, as you can see, I press function one. 
and it starts up how it should be. I press function one again and it turns off. As with the other decoder, it wasn't happening. So now you can see I wired the yellow one to the green, I wired the brown to the blue one on the decoder. That was it. And like I said, I end up taking the board away, just figured and refigured and cutting it and, you know, putting the orange to the motor like it should be and the grey to the motor and the red to the positive and the black to the negative. So it's all done like you normally do when you actually don't have a, a board. So yeah, as you can see, it's done. It works. It looks great now when I turn it on again. Watch it start back up. Yep. So now I've just got to put the locomotive back together, which shall be fun. The boring part of it all, the worst part. Putting the body back on top and putting the little, the little, um, what's it called, railing things on the side. I'm so tired at the moment, I can't think what they're called. But yeah. But anyway, I hope this actually helps anyone who may have the same problem as I did. And hopefully they can get it working and have a smoke generator themselves so if you're fitting the smoke generator i'm just gonna fit it into the hole here and um see how much room i have and then just glue it in place so it's actually quite simple so it's the easiest part of it all so i'll show you when it's done So, as you can see now, it has got the smoke coming out of it. That one is really, really smoking away. This one, it needs a little bit of warming up. As you can see, the model is all back together. As like I explained in the video, I've cut that board away. Just because of the fact that it was short circuiting it out. And I didn't want to have any problems, so. Anyway, as you can see, really, really does add life to the layout. And it adds that real steam feel to it. So, I'll leave you with a few shots of the trains running past with their smoke pouring out of them and thanks for watching